Predicting Bronson-Lowry reactions are very similar to predicting redox reactions uh, in our redox unit. So that's awesome because it's going to feel like you're doing the same pattern that you were before. So what we used for the redox reactions was our data booklet and we put our finger and we found our strongest reducing agent. We put our finger, we're going to do the same thing here. Okay. So just like that unit, we have to list our species. The, the two, like not new things, but the things like the, to really, really remember in acids and bases, you know, if it's a, if it's a ionic compound, we break it up. If it's a molecular compound, we keep it together. But, but this is like, this is needs to be highlighted. If it's a strong acid, we're gonna list H3O plus as our species. And if it's a weak acid, we're gonna keep it together. Okay, that's really important. And then if it's a solution, we write water and all that kind of stuff. Then we're gonna put our finger on our data book, we're gonna find our strongest acid, we're gonna find our strongest base. Then we're gonna write those reactions by transferring a proton. And then the waterfall rule applies here too. If our strongest acid is above our strongest base, we're going to think it's spontaneous, but we can't say that because both reactions are happening. So it's not like it's non-spontaneous. It's, it's that that direction is more spontaneous than that direction. That's what it means. So what happens is we have to write the, we think, oh, spontaneous, but we write down that it favors the products and that our percent yield will be greater than 50%. So when we think spontaneous, that's what we write, but we don't, we never write spontaneous. Okay. So let's have a look at our data booklet. So in your data booklet, and I just I just copied out a little section of it that has to do with this board right now. Uh, and this is on page eight and nine of your data booklets. You have this double-sided chart here, okay? And it says relative strengths of acids and bases at the top, boom. Okay, so this is that table here. Um, so let's just talk about this for just a second before we get into the learning material. Uh, obviously, you see a column of acids and a column of their conjugate bases and then the names of them. So you can look up the names too. Um, but kind of important, these ones are considered to be my strong acids. Okay, and you can see that they're Ka's and we'll talk about their Ka's later. They just say very large, right? In fact, that, so the K value is way greater than one. So my products are much bigger than my reactants. Like I don't have an equilibrium. I have hundred percent yield here. So these are my strong acids. They 100% ionize. Remember like chem 20, they hundred percent ionize. Okay. So when I said, if you have a strong acid, right? write down H3O plus, that means if one of these is in that word problem, you write down H3O plus. If any of these are in your word problem, then they're weak acids and they stay together, okay? The relative strength, so these are all weak acids, but they get weaker and weaker as you go down. This is your strongest base down here at your OH minus and then they get weaker and weaker as you go up. So it's just like the redox table. If I put my finger in the top left hand corner of the redox table, I found my strongest oxidizing agent and then I worked my way down to find the strongest. And this is the strongest base and I'm going to work my way up to find my strongest and they get weaker and weaker as you go up. So exactly the same template here. Okay. So, and then also just like the redox unit, I didn't have to use these five steps if it was obvious. If it was obvious that my um, silver ion and copper solid, copper can only give electrons, it can't take them, then I didn't really need to follow these five steps. Uh, so same thing, the, the examples that we just finished doing, it was pretty obvious that HF was gonna donate a proton because it couldn't do anything else. Um, so, but here the, we have to do these five steps when it's not so obvious, when we have a whole bunch of stuff and I'm not, I'm not sure which one's going to donate, and which one's going to accept. So here's an example. If I have these two species, I don't know which one is going to donate and which one is going to accept. This could technically donate and become H, uh, SO3 minus, two minus, I mean, if this donated, or it could accept and become neutral. Same with this guy. It could donate and become CO3 two minus, or it could accept and become H2 CO3 neutral. So both of these have the capability of being an acid or a base. They would be in the, in the, you know, in Arrhenius's exception pocket. 
So what we have to do is, okay, our species are that and water, but it's, it does, it's not going to be our strongest, so I haven't even bothered to write it down. I need to go to this table, I need to put my finger on the top left-hand corner, and I need to figure out which one of these is stronger, okay? So it's not a strong acid at all, so I keep going. It's not this. I keep going, I keep going. Ah, here, here HCO3 minus is stronger than HC... Ugh. HSO3 minus is stronger than HC. So this becomes my strongest acid, okay? Put your finger, this, no, no, yes, this is my strongest base, right? So I don't have, I don't have, oh, I have this, it must be my strongest base. The other is a base, it's up here, but it's weaker. So I chose my strongest acid, I chose my strongest base, the acid is gonna donate a proton to the base and it's going to become, and it's going to become uh, SO3, two minus. Now hold on a minute, where was that? Here's my strongest acid that I found, right? Put your finger, find your strongest, and it became SO3, two minus, became SO3, two minus. So those two things are tied together. And then this becomes H2CO3 neutral. And have a little look. Uh, when I found my strongest, this is my strongest base, right? Oh, no, that's not. This is my strongest base, and it became H2CO3, so it became H2CO3. So you can either do it and see it, transfer a proton, or you can kind of go, oh, there's a half reaction, there's a half reaction, and I'm kind of writing my net reaction. However you see it is fine. Okay, so this then becomes the conjugate. This was the acid, this becomes the conjugate base. If this is the base, this becomes the conjugate acid. These are pairs, right? Pair and a pair. Is this spontaneous? Well, hold on a minute. Okay, so this is my strongest acid. This is my strongest base. The waterfall is going uphill here, so it's non-spontaneous. I can't write that. I have to write that my reactants are favored or that the yield will be less than 50% yield because I, I am like breaking in that forward reaction because it's not very spontaneous. Okay, makes sense? Okay, so here's another example, sodium nitrite and, li and lactic acid. So my species are sodium, nitrite, lactic acid, and water. This is a weak acid, so I kept it together. Weak acid, kept it together. Okay, so here I have, I think I need another color of marker. Um, where did that purple one go? I have that here. Oh, it's here. Okay, so there's my species. I put my finger, I try to find my strongest. Don't have, don't have, don't have, don't have. Ah, here is my lactic acid. It is my strongest acid. Put my finger, try to find my strongest. Don't have, don't have, don't have. Uh-oh, I didn't write it down. Whoa-oh, I didn't write it down. I think it's up here, though. NO2 minus. Yeah, NO2 minus. So this is my strongest base. It becomes HNO2. So this is my strongest base. So this is my bronzolari acid because it was the strongest acid. This is my bronzolari base because it's the strongest base. Because this is an acid, it's going to donate a proton. And this becomes this. So here it is becoming that. And this becomes this. So here it is becoming this. My percent yield is less than 50% because it went uphill here. Okay, so that board was getting a bit messy, so hopefully this like clears things up a little bit for you. So here are two more examples. Hydrochloric acid and potassium hydrogen carbonate are reacting. So writing my species list here, I have hydrochloric acid. I notice it's in that top section of my data booklet. That means it 100% ionizes that because it's a strong acid. And so I write down H3O plus and Cl minus, because for strong acids, I write down H3O plus. So H3O plus and the Cl minus. Potassium, hydrogen carbonate. Okay, put my finger, find my strongest. This is my strongest acid. Notice I do not write HCl, but rather I write my H3O plus as my strongest acid. Here's my strongest, put my finger on the bottom right hand corner, work my way up, that's my strongest base. So I found my strongest acid and I found my strongest base. My acid is going to donate a proton to the base. 
This is the conjugate. If this is the strongest acid, my bronzolari acid, this is the conjugate base. Okay, and I can see them right beside each other on the data booklet. This is my bronsted lowry base, and this is my conjugate acid. I can see them right beside each other on the data booklet. So for all intents and purposes, this is my reaction like we just finished doing. Now, I don't know, sometimes we go into this in Chem 20, sometimes we don't, but when you add uh, an acid to some baking powder, that's what this is, you get bubbles. I don't, I don't see any bubbles here. And that's because the H2CO3, as soon as you write it down, you understand it decomposes. As soon as I write this down, it decomposes into water and carbon dioxide. So I write it down, I formed it, and I go, oh yeah! And then I break it up into those two things. So what I really get is my strongest acid and my strongest base make that conjugate base and these two things, the carbon dioxide and the water. And then I recognize that I have two waters here, so I have to combine them into two H2Os. So my final answer then is the strongest acid and the strongest base make two waters and my carbon dioxide. And I can no longer write like my conjugate acid and it, because I, because I've like gone another step. Okay. Here's another spot, which looks like a very different question, but I'm still going to use these five steps to answer it which is a bronze and Lowry base. And here's my list. And I go to my data booklet and I put my finger on all those bases and I don't find any of these. So in order to dissect them, I have to think about the literal definition. A bronze and Lowry base is a proton acceptor, right? A proton acceptor, which means I can add an H plus to this. So I'm gonna have a look at my species list and then I'm going to see which one of these I could maybe add an H plus to. So this is methanol from our organic unit. And in science 10, I give this as a distractor for a base. In chem 20, I give this as a distractor for a base. And on the chem 30 diploma, you're going to find that this is a distractor for a base. This is not a base. Alcohols are not basic. Right? This is, there's, there's, there is no OH minus here. So, because that's not plus, that's not minus. Ah, right? CH3 plus? Ooh. So, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. So, it's an alcohol. So, alcohols are not basic. Okay. So, it's not A. Because that was the distractor in science 10 that you didn't fall for. I hope. Uh, so, then I've got so this. I got this. Sodium bromide. So sodium bromide in my species list would be sodium and Br minus. I have this in my species list. I would have these two ions. And then I have this, which is a weak acid. Uh, and that in my species list, according to that, stays together. So according to that, stays together. So I can't add an H plus to this situation. So this can't be right. This is an alcohol, not a base. So that can't be right. So I'm left with C and B. With both C and B, I can see myself adding an H plus to that Br minus and it becoming HBr. And I can see myself adding an H plus to this guy and it becoming H2PO4, uh, 2 minus. No, what? This is a 2 minus ion. I didn't write that down properly. This is a 2 minus ion, so this is a 1 minus ion. There we go. Okay, so I can add an H plus onto both of these. Uh-oh, so I still have B or C. But then I remember that if I were to form this, this is one of my strong acids. It 100% ionizes. So I can't actually get that Br minus to stick. I can't get that H plus to stick onto the Br minus. Like as soon as I want to add it, it goes 100% ionized. Like I don't, that doesn't stick to me. We ionize. So this is the only one that can accept an H plus. And so now I am left with C as my only answer because I listed my species and I figured out which one of these was a weak base, could accept a proton based on the, um, based on my species list. Okay.